every time different? Yes. <laughs> Actually, the two last place teams are both trying to escape that distinction tonight. If you think you're seeing a lot of red and white on your screen, uh, <laughs> it's not an imagination. There's <laughs> both of these teams wear red and white. Obviously, the Raiders are in white across the way. And uh, again, red helmets, which makes it a little difficult sometimes when you're looking downfield. But uh, Delcy with the white stripes on their helmets. In here, there's going to be a really, really big crowd here at Delcy. And this has been a football powerhouse uh, for years, Tom. It is. And during that national anthem, your attention is drawn to Greg Masso. He's 6'4", 381 pounds. And Tyler Habersham, who's 6'4", 335 pounds. Two seniors on this Delsey team. They're kicking off. Ocean City will get the football. Delsey won the toss and deferred. End over end kick. Taking it about the five. Up the middle and out across the 20 to about the 24-yard line comes Tristan Schmidt. Does a little bit of everything for the Raiders. 5'9 sophomore, and Ocean City will start on its own 24, I believe. You know, Tom, I, I want to get this in before I forget. John Oberg, who was, uh, you know, coached here for years and years and years and years, uh, lived in my community uh -huh. down at the shore in Seaville at uh, Osprey Point. For years he lived there, um, passed away, I guess, about a year ago. And uh, just, Let all-time all South Jersey in wins when he left here. Yep. And uh, coached, as you said, at Ocean City for a while. All right, Walker Bailey. Little swing pass out to Gunther, but uh, not not much there. He stopped uh, maybe for a yard, but right around the line of scrimmage. Boy, a whole host of uh, tackle by Dan Russo. Last time we saw Dan Russo, he was the quarterback at Vineland, and he had a big game against Ocean City last year. Uh, here he's a running back, and the way he ran against Ocean City, that's no surprise, but he's also an outstanding linebacker. Also, the yard on the play, second and 11. Man in motion. Bailey rolls out. Pass is complete to Moyer. Out across the 30. Ball pops out out of bounds. Looks like he went out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. Giuliano uh, Conigliaro was right on Moyer the whole time. The pass was well thrown and well defended. The Raiders pick up about maybe, what, five, six yards on the play. It's early, but uh, Bailey looks a little more mobile uh, tonight. Yeah, I, I, you know, he's, he's going to be running back and forth to get the play. I'm never yeah. a big fan of that, but he's uh, got a week off next week, so hopefully by the following week he'll be close to 100%. Slot to the left and nothing up the oh. middle for Duke Gunther. I'm well, sure uh, Delsey's watched some film and they know the importance of Duke Gunther who uh, is in the top 45 all time at Ocean City with still nine or six games left or something. Yeah, and they brought Russo in from the uh, left corner back position and uh, 
He just really, he was in on the tackle with four or five other teammates. Moyer to punt, gets a low snap. Dom Titi calls for a fair catch and actually runs away from it and gets a nice Ocean City bounce down to the 30-yard line. So Delcy takes over on its own 30-yard line. There's a number of uh, successful football players, as you would expect on a program like this. And Tatey is one of them. He was an all-star as a safety. And uh, Wayne Adair was an all-star defensively, but he's a good running back. And, of course, Zach Maxwell runs the offense as well as any quarterback. He was the all-division quarterback last year. And we mentioned Dan Russo and uh, Jake Phelan. Russo out across the 35. Yeah. I think Moyer came up to make the tackle there, Tom. And, you know, as you said, they're a ball control offense. They're going to run the ball a lot. In order to do that, you got to control the line of scrimmage as we all, if they can, uh, if they want to stop this running game. Maxwell has three touchdown passes so far. Dare has scored three times, two of them on passes. And Russo's run for three touchdowns. So they've spread it out a little bit. Second and four. Motion. The pitch. Trying to get to the outside, but chased down before he uh, gets out of bounds by Tom Grimley. What, what a great tackle by Grimley, Tom, and, and pursued across the field laterally and uh, just made a nice wrap and tackle, which is the kind of stuff they teach. It's a flag on the play. That was Xavier Wyatt, 5'8", senior, on the carry. It's a hold against Delcy. The fans didn't like it. <laughs> well, when have you ever heard a fan base that likes a penalty called against their team? No, but they don't <laughs> always make a noise. <laughs> All right, so it's going to be third down and about nine. They haven't moved the ball yet. No. Might not, uh, might not take the penalty. You would think they would. Uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, here we go. So now we're going back to about it's 27. 12 or 13. Yeah, how did it get there? 10 yards. Oh, it was a holding penalty. Okay, I'm sorry. Repeat the down, second down, 12. Yep, yep. Second and 12 it is. Receiver split to the left. In the wing T, Maxwell hands it off and out to the 30. It's Wyatt again. Really nice uh, ball deception and Wyatt's not real big. He kind of hides behind some of those big guys up front. That little uh, inside handoff. I, I won't be surprised if they have that counter crisscross play as well. Most teams that that run the ball a lot in this formation do have that play. Third and ten at the tw at the thirty. Receiver split to the right. Maxwell rolling that way. Passes over the middle and it's incomplete. A little behind the receiver who tried to reach back to get it. That was Russo, but. Uh, out of his reach, so it's going to be a fourth and ten and punting situation for Delcy. Live coverage of Ocean City High School football produced by Crossover Productions and Prime Events. Executive producers Bill Shawcross and Matt Ulmer. Bill's also the videographer tonight. Tell your friends they can watch the action by going to OceanCitySports.com. Select the live online broadcasts. You can watch them all from back to, what, 2011 or something. Punting situation. Low snap, not much of a rush, but a boomer. And it's out of bounds inside the Ocean City 40-yard line. Jonathan Harris with a nice kick. And so the teams exchange punts here in the early going. It's not too late to go to Gillian's Wonderland Pier, sixth in the boardwalk in Ocean City. Wonderland is open tomorrow and Sunday from 1 till 6. 
They'll be open uh, the same hours again next weekend. Remember to save your unused tickets. They'll be good next season or the season after that. The summer continues through October 8th at Gillian's Wonderland Pier, 6th in the boardwalk at Ocean City. Visit them online at gillians.com. First and 10, Ocean City at its own 38-yard line. Up the middle, Duke Gunther to the 40. Again, he brought down there number eight, Carlos Reyes. You're going to hear his name called a lot. You know, Gunther, you know, he gets most of the carries, as we well know, Tom. I've watched him now in uh, three games, but, you know, this is a team that's also seen a lot of film, and, and they're a team that runs the ball, so it would stand to reason that they've going to play good defense against the run. Ocean City's at 139 plays, and Gunther's carried it 63 times before tonight. Second and about seven. Receivers to each side. Bailey back to throw. He's going long down the center for Moyer. It's too long. He ran into a defensive back on the way, but it was incidental. Oh, there is a flag on the field, and it's around that spot. I think they're going to call pass interference or holding. Yeah, it's just, just overthrew him a little bit, although I think that uh, Canigliaro, who was in the coverage, they're going to call him for the hold. I, I didn't really see the hold there, but it might have happened on that cut toward the post. I didn't see a hold, but I definitely saw him come together. Uh, and uh, it took Moyer off stride, and I guess that's what the officials saw. So the ball's out to the 50 for a first down. Is this a rule you think they'll ever change and, and, and give it to the spot of the foul as opposed to? Well, they've had two decades to change it. They never have. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like the NFL. Yeah, that's what it should be. Well, Bailey's going to change the play. or yeah, They're showing blitz again off this left side with Russo. First and 10 at midfield. And whistles. <laughs> I was going to say he timed that perfectly, but maybe he was just a tad early. We'll see what the flag is. Oh, delay a game. Yeah, they didn't get the playoff. So he timed it perfectly. They did pick Russo up on that blitz. Yeah. But calls the Raiders five. So it's first and 15 from the 45-yard line. Ocean City off next week. Bailey drops back, looks over the middle. It's caught. That's Moyer. Moyer pulls out of a tackle and gets inside the 45, picks up about 11 or 12 yards. Yeah, I think this is a game, Tom, where I think they're going to rely more on the pass than they have in the first three games. Um, you know, we'll see. But And, you know, if you throw the ball successfully, it sets Gunther up a little bit better. I mean, a lot of teams, they want to run the football, establish the run, opens up the pass. And sometimes against some teams, if they're winning a the battle up front, you're better off doing it in reverse with the pass first. That reception puts Moyer over 500 yards for his career. Gunther cuts it back and drives a Yard or two short of the first down. Third down coming up. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be tough against the run. And one thing I like, there's some, a lot of sportsmanship in this game so far, helping each other up. You know, a lot of times you don't see that as much in the high schools now. I've been seeing it a lot this year. Yeah, that's good. Because you don't see it, obviously, on higher levels than this. And usually the kids in high school emulate what they see on television with the colleges and the pros. Masso and Haversham, whom we mentioned before, who total uh, 716 uh, pounds between them, are in the center of that defensive line right now. See if uh, Duke decides to go at them. No, nope, play action. Pass is too high and incomplete. Trying to hit out there in the left flat to Lon Fisher, but he couldn't get up high enough. And Ocean City faced with punting situation. We'll see what they decide to do there at the Delsey 42-yard line. Yeah, he just kind of sailed. The pass just kind of sailed on him a little bit. He was starting to get some pressure, but 
well overthrown. Fisher really had no chance to catch that, but it looks like they're going to go for that here. Yep, they are. The good thing, of course, at Ocean City in some of these situations is Moyer is the punter. Right. So they can fake, but they're not even lining up the punt here. Wide slot to the left. Trying to draw them off sides, maybe. Possibly. Bailey takes a snap. He's moving, makes a cut, but he stopped. That was Russo. Yep, he, he is, Russo is there, Nick Lee. So that gamble there doesn't work. Plus he also averages 100 yards a game running the ball. Yep. So Delcy will take over on its own 45-yard line. First down is always key against a team that runs the football well. Delcy's ranked number seven in South Jersey in the online 25. Last week, uh, Ocean City played Cedar Creek. They're number 21. The week before that, number three mainland. So it's been an interesting first four games. Up the middle to the 50 and maybe all the way down to the 47-yard line. Russo carries. It doesn't get any easier either, Tom. I mean, they, they do. There's no question. They have a, a tough schedule, um, you know, and that's predicated on the fact that they've had a, they had a couple really good seasons and got moved up and playing some teams that are also having had really good seasons. Well, when they come back, they play Winslow Township on the 29th. St. Joe game is scheduled to be in Hamilton, but their field is not ready yet, so there's a chance that would be at Cary Stadium too. St. Joe, of course, is 0-3. Hesitation shooting off the gap is uh, Xavier Wyatt. And he's down to the 40 before Ocean City stops him. Yeah, you mentioned uh, 275 or 276 pounds a minute ago. Xavier Wyatt's 5'8", 152. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so it's first and 10 at the Ocean City 40 yard line. No threats yet. About four first minutes left for the in the first City quarter. So I said first down's key. I mean, you really think the Raiders probably stack everybody up in tight first down. Maxwell puts a man in motion. Off the right side, there's room. Good yardage for Alex Grippo. 5'10", 204 pound junior. Raiders in at 4'4". Moyer in on the tackle along with um, uh, J.P. Forster. Gain of about six, almost seven. Just really uh, Good blocking up front by Delcy, and they're finding the hole, which is something that Gunther's been able to do the last few games. Maxwell brings the play in from the sidelines, just like Bailey does. Yeah, I think the kids all wear the, the plays on their wrists. Why won't just give them a number? <laughs> mm. Single back motion. And off the left side, a first down inside the 30. Russo, Russo on the carry. They, uh, Grimley and Schmidt in on the tackle. Ball's at the 27-yard line. They follow the last few plays. They've followed the uh, motion back into the hole, which obviously gives them that extra blocker up there. It's a huge crowd of people, and they're still lined up trying to get in here. They should have. Well, they heard you were going to be here, and yeah. if they wanted to get here before. I'm done signing autographs. I know. <laughs> and tripped up is uh, Russo. I'm sorry, that was Grippo. And that was uh, Joey Berardis, who made the stop. Six-foot yeah. junior. Well, that time they put the man in motion was uh, Anderson, and then he stopped. You know, they put him in motion looking to get the flow going toward the motion man as they have run the ball a couple times doing that. Um, and that time he stopped and came back. 
But uh, Berardis was right there to make that stop. That's a good play. Berardis came into this game with 21 tackles in the first three, five for losses and two sacks. Only Nick Layton with 33 tackles in the first three games has more. Motion. Motion back has it. And he looks like he's going to get the first down. That was Joel Anderson, six foot, 201 pound junior, and pretty much everybody's carrying the ball here for Delsey. Yeah, that's the first time they've given the ball to the motion back. And and uh, most of the few of the Raiders went for the guy who was going up in the middle with the uh, going up the middle, thinking he had the ball. But good deception by uh, Maxwell. Ball's right on the 15-yard line. First down is 10 for Delsey from the Ocean City 15-yard line. Maxwell on the center. Keeps it. Fires incomplete. Collision inside the five. Giuliano Canigliaro thought he was interfered with, but there's no flag. Moyer in the coverage. And really nice defensive play. I'm kind of surprised they Watch tried it to again throw the here. ball there. They had pressure, too, on Maxwell, just a step or so away. Yeah, I kind of thought that uh, Canigliaro was going for the ball, and Moyer kind of fell over <laughs> top of him. Second and ten. Uh, why would you, you know, you're chewing up yardage like this, six, eight not yards of carry, and then you get down to you know, to the 20-yard line and you throw a pass. I'm just a little surprised at that. Second and 10 for Delsey. Second and 10 at the 15. Motion. Maxwell off the left side for the touchdown. Forgot to tell you, he can run it too. Yeah, real good deception there. You saw, I mean, he, he first man through, fakes the handoff to him and Everybody in the up front defense goes to her. Here it is again. Here comes the running back into the line. Everybody goes to tackle him, and Maxwell's got the football. Hardly anybody knows. Runs that offense as well as anybody. Shane Madden in the kick, and his kick is wide. He was six for eight before that. So Delsey holds the lead, six to nothing, with a minute and 13 seconds left in the first quarter. Are you overwhelmed by the college application process, unsure of where to start or which college is right for you? Look no further. Find your fit. College Counseling is here to help. Run by Jennifer Jamison, an experienced college consultant. Find your fit offers personalized guidance to help you navigate your college journey. From uh, identifying the perfect college, co uh, collaborating with NCAA experts to help you find the best fit for an athlete, to crafting compelling applications, they're with you every step of the way. Don't let the stress of college applications hold you back. Reach out to Find Your Fit College Consulting today and take the first step towards your bright future. Visit findyourfitcc.org. For more information, they're also on Facebook and Instagram. Find your fit college consulting because the right fit makes all the difference. And every coach will tell you that. No question about it. Shane Madden to kick off. High kick, down to about the five. Good coverage by Delphi. Schmidt gets across the 15 to about the 17 yard line. We'll see where they spot it. Okay, just a missed block there on Gephardt. He kind of got in there all by himself. Tristan's had some uh, really good run backs on the kickoff. He gets ahead of steam gone, but Gephardt made sure he wasn't getting that head of steam and the Raiders are going to start at their own 17. Schmidt averages 19.2 yards on kickoff returns so far this year. Slot left, receiver to the right. Bailey drops back. Throwing long down the left side. Just a little bit too long. Trying to get to John Moyer. 
Boy, Moyer, Moyer had a step or two also. Had a second gear, too, but it wasn't fast enough. Yep. Just overthrowing the receivers a little bit, just by a little bit here in the first quarter. About a minute left, minute four to be exact. Now Moyer runs that sideline pattern like a fly pattern and comes back in a huddle and hopefully he's saying they don't ask me to do that again right in a row. Yeah. Second and ten for the Red Raiders. Slot to the left. Play action. Pass out to the 25 to Moyer. Bring about third and maybe three. Well, he only had to go six or seven yards on that little slant pattern, but still takes a good hit. He's in good coverage. Takes a high-low hit and uh, holds on. Key third down play here early in the going. You don't want to turn the ball over on downs right away this quickly. Third and three for the Red Raiders. Slot to the left, back to the right of Bailey, and Bailey's hit and brought down. Yep, that's uh, Jonathan Harris. Just came right in. Defensive end beat the blocking. Oh. He, he beat two blockers. He beat the blocker at the line of scrimmage, and then he beat the blocker in the backfield who was going to... Uh, you know, be protecting Bailey. He had absolutely no time at all. Harris just too quick. First quarter's over. Delcy leading. Six to nothing. At Boulevard Super Liquors on Roosevelt Boulevard in Marmora, the Bile family has served area residents for four generations. Boulevard is just 676 steps from Ocean City and right off exit 25 of the Garden State Parkway. Through the years, They've had, they've they have employed hundreds of former Ocean City High School athletes. They form a courteous staff that's ready to help you find what you need quickly and get you on your way. Boulevard is open every day until 10 p.m. Whatever your needs, the staff at Boulevard Super Liquors can make it happen. Call them at 609-390-1300 or check out their new website at superliquorsnj.com. Boulevard Super Liquors in Marmora, family owned since 1938. Sure, True Value Hardware in Summers Point hopes that you'll continue to shop locally. They offer friendly service and expert advice. They'll do anything to help. They're open weekdays and Saturdays until 6, Sundays until 4. Help is just around the corner at Shore True Value Hardware, 515 New Road, Summers Point, 609-927-6464. Visit them online at shorehardware.com. Moyer will punt from just inside the five. Low snap handles it. Gets a big high kick away. And they're going to let it bounce. That was a, about 10 yards short of the back that was back there to receive it. So a little bit, a little tough for him to catch it. But most coaches, including uh, Jim Schaefer and Steve Parker through the years, say catch that ball. Yeah, and back more than a yard. Darshan keeps it. Off the right side, picks up a few. Joey Bernardis, yep, oh, yeah. makes the tackle. Yep, but not before a five or six yard gain, and that's ball at least three quarters of the time. Ballsham checks into the game, 5'10", 210 pound senior. Defensive alignment, now they're bringing up 10 guys toward the line of scrimmage. Second and five, Russo. Well, that time they had numbers where the ball would go ball. on the stop. So it'll be third and one. You would think that uh, Delcy may be in four down territory here. Substitution coming back in the game is Harris. Maxwell under center keeps it. And he drives inside the 40, easily getting the first down. Maxwell with the keeper. They got some big boys up front. And that's what makes this offense work. That and the skill of the running backs. Yep. And the number of them. And the deception of the quarterback. Yeah, very, very important. 
Maxwell keeps it. Maxwell's off the left side. He's down close to the first down around the 30-yard line. Yeah, I think he got the first down. I think that's the same play they ran, Tom, in the, to score the touchdown. Greg Masso was slow getting up on the play when his teammates started to try to help him up and then said, forget it. But he got up on his feet. He's fine. Yeah, well, he's only 381. Man, 381, as you said before, 335. 296 seems small, but he's only 5'8", so. Ball's at the 29, first and 10. Delsey trying to add a second score here in the first half. Uh, Russo. Head off to number 32. No, that wasn't Russo. I'm confusing Russo and Grippo. Have to work that out. Ball's down to the 26 yard. And uh, ball carrier right behind him. About three on the play, second and seven. It almost has to be a, a guessing game here a little bit for this defensive line and linebackers as to, you know, where the ball's going. And obviously what Delsey's trying to do is, is make you think it's going one way and, and give it the other way. Mm -hmm. Second down and seven for Delsey. Maxwell puts a man in motion. And this time it is Russo, and he breaks into the open for the touchdown. Touchdown! Number 10, 26-yard run by Dan Russo, his fourth touchdown of the year. And Delsey has a two-score lead. Yeah, and once he gets beyond that initial uh, line of scrimmage, there's not much chance anybody's going to bring him down. And, and there were, you know, a few Raiders back there. But at that point, he's already got a full head of steam, and he's in that in that spot where it's kind of like no man's land there. Just he's a good run. 6'1", 221, and he's a junior. As we said, he was the quarterback for Vineland last year when Ocean City played them and had a big game against the Raiders. A couple long runs, one for a touchdown. Transferred here to Delsey. His dad was the coach at Vineland, and he stepped down. Vineland has a new coach. They're going for two. Off the right side and in with Russo. I, I tell you, Tom, I don't remember him being that big last year at Vineland. I'm sure he's a little bigger, but he wasn't small. 14 nothing, Delsey. I think if I was them, and this is no reference to their kickers or anything, I'd go for two every time. If you have printing needs, you need the printing company. In Summers Point, they're top quality printers, friendly, skilled professionals. The printing company will work with you as part of their unwavering commitment to exceed your expectations. From concept to finished product, your business is their priority. They pride themselves in delivering the expert printing you deserve at an affordable price. From business cards to brochures to visual communication. That includes signs, banners, graphics, vehicle wraps, and much more. The Printing Company, open 9 to 5 at 457th Street in Summers Point. Phone Chugger and his staff at 609-374-5417. Let the Printing Company bring your ideas to life. I think we're getting what we expected, Tom, uh, out of Delsey as far as, you know, for the foot, uh, running the football and you know, open up some big holes. Here's the kick. Comes down inside the 10. And boom. Ball came loose. Big hit. Delsey has recovered the fumble. Milo Gebhard, 5'8", 132-pound freshman, made that hit. And they're giving Aiden Shepard the recovery. He's a freshman. <laughs> so these are, there's a couple of guys you'll hear about for three years now. And there'll be, there'll be a situation where they'll be looking at that film, a couple missed blocks, and, and uh, Schmidt had just no, no help. Nobody in front to slow down. The guy had to bead right on him, hit him hard. Maxwell gives it to Russo again, and he breaks down to about the 10. Picks up about eight on the play. You know, when, when you score a touchdown and, and 
you know, you're rushing, rushing the football most of the time, and you kind of it, it demoralizes the defense. You know, you're picking up yeah. six, eight yards of carry, and you run in for a touchdown, and then you recover a fumble on the ensuing kickoff, and you talk about momentum. Yeah. And they're down on the 10-yard line, and all indications are, you know, the Raiders need a turnover here. Sal so Marchese, the Buna, or the Adelsi coach, 238 career wins. Only three active coaches have more. Wide slot, handoff right side, breaking free to the goal line and in for a touchdown. Yeah. That's Russo again. Yep. Forster Russo. makes the stop, but not until uh, Russo's across the goal line there. But right about now, Ocean City wishes Russo was still the quarterback at Vineland. <laughs> uh, although they got some other talented backs, Tom. Oh, yeah. I think the key, really, the key is there. You just look at the blocking up front. The, the Raiders are just outsized and outmanned, so to speak. Not a good snap. The kick goes into the line. So it's 20 to nothing. It was still 7.05 left in the first half. Delsey with a strong running attack, dominating this first half. Things are always happening at the Ocean City Free Public Library. Coming up on October 5th, the Fall Author Luncheon at the Flanders Hotel featuring Pam Jenoff. Information's available at OceanCityLibrary.org. And the next classic film night Monday, Dead Poets Society. Star the late, great Robin Williams and featuring Ocean City High School graduate Rich Stites in the Chris Maloney Lecture Hall. You can also learn the best way to apply for college at the library or improve your cooking and computer skills. It's all free, plus books, magazines, internet access, and much more. Ocean City Free Public Library, 18th and Simpson. Visit them online at OceanCityLibrary.org. Well, Raiders got to get something going offensively here, Tom, obviously. And at 20 to nothing, as you said, still seven minutes left here in the first half. Delsey really just having their way to the delight of their home crowd. Here's the kick. Comes down at the five. This time there is some room. And out across the 30. Schmidt stopped at the 30, I guess. Unfortunately, you know, when you're behind three touchdowns, you really have to put the ball in the air a little bit. And that, you know, the defense is aware of that as well. And Man. yet, Gunther, as we've talked about, has really carried the load the first three games. Yeah. But so far tonight, they just uh, have not been able to open up the holes for him. I picks up about the five yards. We mentioned that Marchese is fourth among active football coaches, just here with the th 238 wins. Number three is Pete Lancetta of St. Augustine Prep. Number two, Tim Gashu, commissioner of the National Football League, gave Frapoli two tickets to the Super Bowl <laughs> in the, in pre prior to the, uh, the Eagles game on uh, Thursday last night in honor of his 50 years as a coach. Wow. They, they just coming right in like tough to stop. Watch Anderson here from the defensive right end position. And he just goes right, the, the block goes down inside. They block down, and he just comes right around that edge, untouched. Bailey has Ball no chance. City, Ball is at the 26. Delsey's on top here, 20 to nothing. Pacini, 13th in Western Ocean City, features gourmet wood-fired pizza. They're also, uh, but they're a lot more than just pizza, featuring delivery, 609-525. 0767. Pacini's open every day at 11.30 a.m. until 9 p.m. on weekdays, 10 p.m. on weekends. And Dining In is back about 1260 West Avenue in Ocean City on the corner of 13th and West right next to Wawa. Check out their menu at PacinioCNJ.com. I'd like to have something from them right now. This is, uh, <laughs> this is the dinner hour game here starting at 7. Mm. Well, the Raiders coming in out of that timeout. They they got to pull something out of their sleeve here. Third and about 14. Third and 14 for the Red Raiders. 
And he's alone in the backfield. Double slot formation. Quick pass in the flat, but nothing there. I mean, Jack Porter makes the catch. Look at the difference. Uh, Jim Reardon, I think, made the tackle. Excuse me. That's what I was going to say. You can really notice the difference between the two defensive alignments. Uh, Delsey just the four-man front, and everybody else five or more yards off the line of scrimmage, you know, playing in the pass. And the Raiders have to stack everybody up inside to play the run. Moyer's punt. Tady calls a fair catch and drops the ball. Looked like he covered it. Uh, he, he tried to catch that like they teach a wide receiver to catch the ball with his hands out in front of him instead of letting that ball come in and cradle into his, uh, into his chest or his stomach. He was fortunate to be right there, able to, to, uh, to fall on it. That's the kind of thing the Raiders need, though. They need a turnover. Well, right now they need a stop or a turnover. You can always tell when we're on the home side of the field, which is normal. Almost exclusive. <laughs> yep. I can remember a couple games we did on the visitor side sitting in the stands over the years. Off the right side, Russo bangs off a couple tackles and falls ahead to the 39-yard line. Well, he ran into Charlie Shutter and uh, Shutter just kind of backed him up. You'll see him here. He's coming in to the right side. Shutter hits him, and then he's also hit by uh, uh, Tom Grimley and just kind of bounces off and, and gains a few more yards. Almost to the 40, second and about five. Down and five the Delsey 39-yard line. Maxwell under center. Keeps. Makes a pitch. That might have been a forward yeah. pitch, but it's okay. It's out to the 50. That's just a statistical fact. It doesn't matter in the game. Joel Anderson got the pitch, and he takes it to the 50 for a first down. Well, you got to be impressed, Tom, with how well Maxwell runs this offense. It is a forward pitch. He was hurt the last couple of games of last year. And uh, some people think they would have gone even further. Not Couldn't go too much further on South Jersey champions. And, they, and they're not undefeated to this point, but they're a pretty impressive football team tonight. Straight ahead, Russo spins at about the 45, but pulled down about a yard later. I was thinking you're talking about working from the other side of the field. If Mainland ever builds a new press box, they should put it on the other side of the field so the sun's at your back. <laughs> yeah, well, that ain't going to happen. No, why not? Because they always want the press box on the side of the field where your PA announcer is and everything else. Of course. I mean, it doesn't matter, but. No, no, everything can go over there. Oh, you mean put the home stand? Uh, yeah, there. everything. Inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. That's the 10th first down for Delsey. See, then the uh, the people, the visitors, don't have to walk as far from their car to get to the stands. You know, you're making the, the home team walk around the, around the field to get to the home stands. I'm sure that would be a big reason. Well, that would be <laughs> something they would consider. It's not like baseball where they got to lay the field out based on where the sun is at certain times of the day. No, but it would be a good move. Maxwell hands it off to Wyatt. And he's out of, or inside the four, uh, 35. Noah Quinn in on the stop. Can't give up a fourth score here in the first half with 2.41 remaining. You see the score there, 20 to nothing. And they scored one touchdown in the first quarter, did Delsey. Yeah, but two here so far in the second quarter. Both by Dan Russo. Yep. One helped a, a turnover on the uh, on a kickoff after the one touchdown. Certainly didn't help. Third and about, or excuse me, second and about six. 
Maxwell still has it. I'm not sure he wanted to keep it, but nope. nobody was there. <laughs> yeah. He's inside the uh, 35 to the 33. It'll be third and about three or four. Yeah, that definitely broke in play. I mean, he, I think his running back got ahead of him a little too much. And Delsey's going to call timeout. 2.01 left first half. Crusaders lead 20 to nothing. If you're planning to build a home, make your first step a visit to Halliday Leonard. Halliday Leonard will consult you on your design, assist the development of your custom home. They build single homes that will fit most any budget, plus condominiums, townhouses, and commercial buildings. Get your ideas together and take them to Halliday Leonard, 700 Haven Avenue in Ocean City, or phone them 609-398-5737. Halliday Leonard will help make your dream home a reality. You know, Bud, the last time we were here, Ocean City, in a playoff game, pulled off almost the perfect hook and lateral play. Harry Feifel to Bob Shalcross to Isaac Robertson. It covered 41 yards for a touchdown. And one of the Philadelphia TV stations picked it as the third best postseason play in the Delaware Valley. Of course, they lost the game by 22 points, but uh, that was a play that cut the lead to one at some point. I remember that play. I had forgotten it was here, but I remember the play. Maxwell still has it, and he's inside the 30. He's got the first down at about the 27-yard line. Quinn again makes the initial stop. And that's a Delcy first down. But another first down. Clock's running now. Ball's on the 27-yard line. Still a minute 40 left. Delcy in control here. Ocean City has but one first down. Maxwell keeps, drops back the throw, completes it to about the 21-yard line with Joel Anderson. Charlie Shutta made the tackle. Yeah, just to put this in a little bit of perspective, Tom, Todd Murray, who believes a left guard, is uh, 264 pounds. And he's the smallest offensive lineman of the five. Mm -hmm. Sixth Street Pizza and Grills open daily from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. weekdays and 11 until 10 on weekends at Sixth Street and the Boardwalk in Ocean City, right at Gillian's Wonderland Pier. Sixth Street Pizza and Grill not only serves varieties of delicious pizza, but hot and cold subs, salads, hot dogs, and their special Angus burgers. And they have free delivery and daily specials. Phone Sixth Street Pizza and Grill, 609-525-0022. Sixth Street Pizza and Grill, sixth in the boardwalk in Ocean City. Delcy will host Kingsway next Friday. And Ocean City will watch television because they don't have a game. Well, I'm sure the players will go out and find a game to, get to see. A lot of good games tonight. I'll try to get some scores for you. Russo bounces it, tries to bounce it. Oh, no, he doesn't have it. <laughs> great, great job. That's Anderson down the right side. Boy, two or three guys were tackling Russo, so I went with it. Yep. <laughs> Again, great deception that uh, Maxwell has. You know, he... <laughs> Luckily for Ocean City, there were three or four guys still over there to be able to push him out of bounds, Forster and Moyer among them. Ball's at the eight. Just over a minute left here in the first half. A lot of time to go eight yards. And again, they've only thrown, what, twice? Yeah. Don't have to. Maxwell under center. Hands it off, cutting back, getting close to the goal line. And that's some pile, but he didn't get it in. And off was the number 10, Dan Russo. Yeah. It, it looks now that the Raiders are, are backed up, backing up just a little bit off the line of scrimmage, the Second linebackers. Well, they were going to line up quick. And Maxwell saw a signal from, he almost forgot to spike the ball. That's what it was. 
He was getting ready to come to the sidelines. Coach pointed his head. You got to spike the ball first. Yeah, it was 42 seconds. Still, yeah, lots of time. Right. And they're down at maybe the one or two yard line. Well, you won't right. see it the now. One. You won't see it now in the goal line defense. But the last few few uh, downs, the Raiders, the, like the linebacker area players, were backed off the line of scrimmage a little bit. I guess to. You know, they got to read the play to see what, which hole they're going to. If they get all in stacked up real closely and, and they break that initial line of scrimmage, it's off to the races. You think this will be a run? <laughs> I think Maxwell's going to keep it. No, he doesn't. Drops. That's Russo again. Dan Russo. And welcome him here to Delcy. Yep. Did I guess he transferred? Did he move, Tom? Do you know? I don't. I don't know if it's a choice school or what the situation is. He's a junior, so he could transfer without any uh, limitations with a new transfer rule. But that's just as far as the NJSIA is concerned. The school has to accept them. Dulcie's going to use their third and final timeout here to decide what to do on this extra point. They're leading, though, 26 to nothing. The RJH Insurance Group has specialized in home and flood insurance since 2006. At RJH, they're committed to excellence. As an independent agency, they have the ability to represent multiple insurance companies to get their customers the most competitive rates. Call Rich Hogue for a quote. 609-630-4569. Or check out their many services at rjhinsurance.com. The RJH Insurance Group. Raider football is on the road, but tomorrow at the Tennessee Avenue complex, soccer complex, uh, girls soccer ranked number 16 in the state will play Deptford at 10 a.m. And at Cary Stadium at noon, field hockey against Rancocas Valley. Those teams are both ranked. Uh, Ocean City's number six in, th in the state. Here's a handoff straight ahead. In for the uh, two-point conversion. Like you said, why do they kick it? Yeah. So Dan Russo has scored three touchdowns and two two-point conversions here in the second quarter. And they lead it 28 to nothing. Finishing this thought, Lisa Cuneo of uh, Ocean City's girls soccer team, if they win tomorrow, are favored, she'll be 50 and one <laughs> in her career. She has a few ties, but uh, 50 and one. And uh, Naomi Niwie had a hat trick earlier uh, this week for the uh, girls soccer team. Girls tennis beat Our Lady of Mercy four to one this week. Alexis Allegretto, a two-time All-Star, won this number one singles in straight sets. And uh, the uh, volleyball team uh, got their first win ever. It's the first year of girls volleyball at Ocean City. And both boys cross country and girls cross country remain undefeated. Well, you'd like some of that uh, good fortune to carry over tonight, but... Not the case so far. Here comes the kick from Madden. And it's going out of bounds. So they'll take the ball, I guess, at the 35-yard line. 38 seconds left in the half. Our offense has not been on the field that much. When you're facing a ball control running football team, your defense is out there a long time. And that just makes it even worse. They get tired. And offense comes out. It's three and out. Last couple times. It's a tough night for the Raiders. I wonder where they came up with a 35-yard line as a place to put the ball when the kickoff goes out of bounds. I don't know. Gunther got a couple yards, got pushed back. Looks like Ryan Hendricks is the quarterback for this series, at least. 
Picked up a yard, did Gunther. Second and nine. Don't know if this is uh, just something that Bailey's re injured the ankle or they just want to. Well, I'm sure they're just protecting him. And they're not going to run another play. So that's the end of the first half here in Franklinville at Delcy Regional High School where the Crusaders lead Ocean City 28 to nothing. Johnson's Popcorn is known all over the Delaware Valley, specializing in their delicious caramel corn. And they're open all year at 1368 Boardwalk in Ocean City. Phone 1-800-842-2676 or go online at johnsonspopcorn.com to place your order. Johnson's Popcorn since 1940. And Shoppies is even better online. You may know their showroom at 1031 Shore Road in Linwood, but you can order whatever you need at shoppy.com. Remember, you're not presenting the best trophy if it's not a Shoppy trophy. Phone 609 653 1684. Shoppies since 1921. Involved in a new century. So it's been the Dan Russo show, at least in the second quarter. He scored 22 points. And uh, Delcy leads it 28 to nothing. We'll be back with the second half. Stick with us.
Back here at Delcy, where the Crusaders lead it. 28 to nothing here at halftime. Ocean City kicking off to start the second half. Had to, had to wait for the uh, clock to run off its minute so they could reset it. You'd think in 2023 they could do that. The voice. Loose ball. And he just fell on it. Yeah, he didn't want to take a chance, I guess, on the ball. So Delcy will start it away. its own 21 yard line. Dom TT fell on that ball. Pretty tough to face a 28 nothing uh, deficit and come out and have to kick off to start the second half. Here's some other scores. Rancocas Valley leads Timber Creek 12 to 7 in a battle of undefeated teams. Mainland leading Atlantic City 40 to 12. Middle Township 24, Clayton nothing. That's at halftime. Millville's just scored twice in the fourth quarter to take a 21 to 7 lead over St. Augustine. Kingsway, who comes here next week, leads Vineland 28 to 7, and Lower Cape May leads Cumberland 13 to nothing. Trying to get to the outside, cuts it back at the 25. And down at the 29-yard line is Joel Anderson. Yeah, at some point, you know, you, you got to wonder if they'll not use Russo quite as much and save him a little bit. I mean, you can only take so much pounding over the course of the season, and they got some big games coming up. Second and about three. Or maybe they don't play him on defense. Who are you talking about? Russo. Oh, he's a good linebacker. Yeah. Oh, you mean here? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. 28-yard line. And Maxwell. Bang, he got hit, but the ball came out. They blew the whistle. Yeah, I thought he was close to being out of bounds there on the sideline. We're a little bit blocked out there by the... Players on the Ocean City bench obviously wasn't out of bounds because the clock's still running. See, they fooled you. You think that's the Ocean City bench because they're wearing red. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm used to looking down from the press box and being on the Ocean City side. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. Maxwell hands it off. Out to just short of the 40. Joel Anderson. Actually ran into his own player. There's a Justin Gooden's helmet came off, yeah. so he's going for a play. Coming into tonight, Delcy was only number seven on number nine in South Jersey Group 3. And if the, if, the, if the playoffs were this weekend, they would go to Seneca in the first round. But Seneca lost last night, so Delcy's going to move ahead of them because those numbers change every week. Not much there. No, that's... It's as well defensed as Ocean City's made a play. Exactly. They've took had a few like that, but uh, that was really well read. Took the words right out of my mouth. That's Russo's shortest gain of the night. That's the same, similar play to, to the first one. You know, we've said yeah. many times, every play kind of sets up something else. And the, and the other play, they gave, faked him the ball, and everybody went to him, and, and Maxwell took the ball around the right side. That time he handed the ball to Russo. The Raiders were ready for it. At the 42, it's third and five. Important play here early in the second half. And well oh, defense. Nice. Nick Layton. Wyatt on the carry. And it's fourth down. Really nice play defensively. And the best series that the Raiders have had since early in the first quarter. Delcy's punter, Jonathan Harris, was out practicing at halftime. It's a good thing because they need him now. <laughs> well, he got off a pretty good one last time he punted. Fourth and five. And the Raiders have stopped Delcy on this possession. 
End over end kick. Caught at the 25 yard line. And out across the 30 to the 31. J.P. Forster brings yeah. it back. Jim Reardon for Delcy with a real nice open field tackle. Again, I said before, say it again, the Raiders are going to have to put something up, get some kind of drive going, get a little momentum, a little bit of confidence, and some points. As far as those power ratings are concerned with Ocean City in Group 4, coming into this game, they're 15th. And that would mean they would open at Shawnee. Shawnee has eliminated Ocean City. Those numbers will change. Ocean City is going to have to win a game or two to get in, I think. And I'm not sure he handed that off. Hendricks, yeah, kept the ball. Picked up, well, maybe a yard. Yeah, fake the uh, road, road Gunther into the into the hole and then took the ball back on a option keep and uh, followed him right in there. Yeah, didn't. didn't wasn't too successful as far as yardage is concerned. Wide slot to the left, receiver to the right. Actually, there's three receivers to the left. Hendricks gives it to Gunther. Can he get to the corner? No. They string it out. Good pursuit. Guess who? Dan Russo. You know, usually guys. I think you got to give a kid like that a rest in a game like this, either one side of the ball or the other. Second, oh, excuse me, third and 11. The ball's back on the 30. Third and 11, City. Slot right, receiver left. Hendricks rolls. The pass down the right sideline and a first down out across the 50. Yeah. That good, was Roy Saluda. Good decision at that point. Darn close to that line of scrimmage when he let go of that pass, but had the wherewithal to realize where he was. Yep, nicely thrown. Nicely yep. thrown and a good return, good run after the catch, rather, by Saluda. Ball is on the 47 yard line. Second first down for Ocean City. I was just going to say first down. We haven't said that in a long time. First and ten for the Red Raiders. Gunther off left side has some room. Gunther's inside the 35 and he's pushed out of bounds at about the 25 yard line. Yeah, and that, that's, that's going to help. I mean, again, we talk about momentum a lot. You know, you like to come out and get the ball to start the second half. They didn't, but they make the stop defensively, and then Gunther. Dom Tatey runs him down. He is a good defensive back. Yep. But uh, good run. Best another run first, of the night. Another first down. Inside the 25. Hendricks. Gunther straight ahead. There's a whole lot of weight in there. <laughs> To push around. Yeah, that's uh look at it. I mean, <laughs> there it is on your screen. Those 72 are two big, strong guys. 72 Masso is 381, 75 Aversham is 335. Second and 11 loss of the yard. From the Delphi 25 yard line. And they're in pretty good shape. Absolutely. They're playing Hendricks gets the ball. And Gunther trying the right side. Makes the turn. Flag on the play. And he dives inside the 20. I think you're going to get a horse collar tackle here. Watch the guy in the white hat. He'll tell us. But we'll watch him for you. You can you. see it here. See if they don't horse collar him here. Oh, face mask. It's a face mask. He could. I knew it was up around the neck somewhere. It was the side of his face mask. Here comes the signal. Just to confirm. Yep, there it is. Personal foul, face mask, called against Delphi. That's an 
automatic first down. Yeah, when you see three flags thrown at the same time, you figure they got it right. There it is. He just kind of moved his head right there at the 20-yard line. Unofficially 35 yards in penalties against Delsey, five against Ocean City. Not a big factor in this game. But the Raiders are inside the 10-yard line. Gunther drives through two tacklers and picks up a couple of yards when it looks like he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that offensive line now, they're, they're uh, opening things up a little bit. Balls at the six. Second in goal. Ball is at the Delphi six yard line. Gunther's down and goal prior to this City. quarter probably only gained what, 10 yards? Can be not too much more than that. It's averaging about uh, 85 yards a game. Here he goes again. There was a hole there. He drives down to the two. Russo uh, among those in the stop. Again, that was the, the uh, option to keep the ball or to leave it in Russo's stomach. Hendricks made the right decision there. Gunther rewards it. Forget the two, they're on the one. Yeah. Ball is at the Delphi one yard line. Third and goal for Ocean City. Oh, this will be tough. I think this is going to be tough to get this one yard right there at the goal line if they're going straight ahead, but we'll see what happens. Hendricks. Gunther off the right side. He's close. Not in. Not in. Well, I, I like the play call. I like the decision for Gunther to go outside, but just good speed. Delsey preventing the first. Uh, preventing the touchdown. Great pursuit. Fourth and goal inside the one. Ocean City trying to get on the board here with four and a half minutes left in the third quarter, trailing 28 to nothing. Delphi, one yard line. Fourth and goal for Ocean City. Delsey, of course, would like to maintain the shutout. And so pretty soon a lot of those guys are going to come out of the game. It's uh Gunther, no, a keeper. And Hendricks runs it in. Number 19, uh, that, again, that's Hendricks. the same play. Put the ball in Gunther's gut, take it out or leave it there. And a good decision by Hendricks that time to take it out and beat everybody to the outside. So Ocean City is on the board. And we're going to point after number nine, Ryder Hay. Ryder Hay on to kick. Had a good year so far, taking advantage of every opportunity. The kick is certainly high enough, and it is good. And Ryan Hay is now five for five, and one for one as a field goal kicker as well. So it's 28 to seven as Ocean City gets on the board here in the first possession of the third quarter. It's not too late to go to Gillian's Wonderland Pier, 6th Street in the boardwalk in Ocean City. Wonderland is open tomorrow and Sunday from 1 until 6. They'll be open uh, the same hours again next weekend. Remember to save your unused tickets. They'll be good next season. The summer continues through October the 8th at Gillian's Wonderland Pier, 6th in the boardwalk in Ocean City. Visit them online at gillians.com. Well, we'll see if the uh, momentum of the score there carries over to the defense here. You know, the two teams come out of the locker room and, and Delcy with a four touchdown lead and they get the football and, and the defense holds on that first series and then the, the uh, offense capitalizes so the momentum's in the red and white or the white and red <laughs> so see what happens kick it off number nine Ryder Hay Hay will kick off it's been successful he's had two or three touchbacks this year it's always nice to not let them return. This will be returned. And it's dropped. <laughs> it's picked up and finally brought out to the 29. Returning kickoffs has not been a high point for Delsey tonight. Well, you're right. That's the second one. The last one they just fell on.
Well, first to 10 from the 30. Keeper, pitch. Anderson with a carry. Yeah, Maxwell waits to the last possible second, and that pitch gained another maybe four yards. Again, this, technically they're very, very adept in this running game. 14th first down. They lead it 28 to 7. Again, uh, Maxwell comes to the sideline to get the play. First and 10 for Delson from their own 44 yard line. Off the right side, stopped at the 46 yard line is Russo. Well, that's. Again, you know, I hate to keep saying the same thing, but you get some momentum. There's 52 is Justin Gooden and 56, Justin McCormick on that line, among a host of others, to plug that hole right away and, and limit that uh, to a two-yard gain. Yeah, you know, it's not like maybe you go into the locker room four touchdowns ahead and you come out. And, and think, you know, all right, let's just kind of go through the motions here. We're going to score again. But obviously, Ocean City has something to say about that. Second and eight. Ball's loose. Yeah, they, they've made some, you know, the, the two miscues on the kickoffs. And that this is, this is not indicative of how they played most of the first half, at least after their initial possession. Third and seven. And nothing there. Stopped at the 50-yard line. Up on again. Russo on the carry. Just a good defensive series again. Six yards and three, uh, six, yeah, six yards and three plays. They're, They're not going to punt fourth and four at the 50. Looking to throw. Pass. Men's out there at the 40, down the sideline, and stumbles into the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, that's a killer. Number 42, Alex. Alex Grippo, 5'10, 204 pound junior. Went into a second gear down the sideline there. He got tripped, but he he stumbled into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, I think, again, you're running the football 95% of the time, maybe 98% of the time, and, you know, everybody's focused on up, and he actually had another receiver. He had Devontae McCrenahan out there as well. Neither one covered and uh, had his choice of receivers. And, and they're going, you know, they're going to kick the extra point. Ball is down. The kick is up. It's high enough. And it's good. So Madden gets one through. And it becomes 35 to 7 with a minute and 35 seconds left in the third quarter. Are you, are you overwhelmed by the college application process? Unsure of where to start, which college is right for you? Well, look no further. Find your fit. College Consulting is here to help. Run by Jennifer Jamison, an experienced college consultant. Find your fit offers personalized guidance to help you navigate your college journey. From identifying the perfect college, collaborating with NCAA experts to help you find the best fit for an athlete, to crafting compelling applications, they're with you every step of the way. Don't let the stress of college applications hold you back. Reach out to find your fit college consulting today and take the first step towards your bright future. That website is findyourfitcc.org. 
Go there for information. They're also on Facebook and Instagram. Find your fit college consulting because the right fit makes all the difference. I tell you, that, that's it's such, a, such a difficult task for a lot of people filling out those college applications and the financial aid forms. And, you know, it's almost like Medicare <laughs> as far as the difficulty of doing things. Here's the kick. It's taken inside the five. And maybe out to the 15. Kingsway has defeated Vineland 38 to 15. Kingsway will come here next Friday to play Delcy. You know, Delcy has not handled kickoffs very well on the three that they've had, but they certainly cover kickoffs very well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's about the only negative in this game that you see. Correct. Hendricks has scored Ocean City's touchdown. Back at the controls. And up the middle. And off to number five, Duke Gunther. Gunther picks up a couple. Tackled in there by uh, number 54, Dylan Snodgrass. After a gain of a couple. Didn't take long for Delcy to take the momentum back, Tom, after that uh, Ocean City touchdown. That's correct. Boy, really, really good crowd here. I mean, the Raiders get good crowd as well, but and there are a lot of Ocean City people here. Second and eight. Hendricks keeps. He outruns the rush. And he gets across the 20, out close to the 25, close to a first down. Well, he wanted to throw the ball to Layton on a little out pass, but he was well, well covered. But Hendricks decided better hold on to it and pick up some yardage, and he did. And that will be an Ocean City first down. He does get the first down. Philly's got four runs in the first, Tom. That's good. The Braves are gone, huh? Oh, no question. <laughs> Every team said that this year. Yeah. Ball's on the 26. There's Gunther to the outside. Gunther's across the 40 and out across the 45 for a first down. He's starting to find some openings. And now the Rosa City first down. The, one of the uh, Delcy players asking the official something or not happy about something. Maybe he thought there was a hold or something there. I just want to know where's a good place for a sub. I know there's a Wawa on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> there's a Wawa everywhere. It's true. That's the end of the third quarter. With Delcy on top here, 35 to 7. At Boulevard Super Liquors on Roosevelt Boulevard in Marmora, the Bile family has served area residents for four generations. Boulevard is just 676 steps from Ocean City and right off exit 25 of the Garden State Parkway. Through the years, they've employed hundreds of former Ocean City High School athletes. They form a courteous staff that's ready to help you find what you need quickly and get you on your way. Boulevard is open every day until 10 p.m. Whatever your needs, the staff at Boulevard Super Liquors can make it happen. Call them at 609-390-1300 or check out their new website at superliquorsnj.com. Boulevard Super Liquors in Marmora, family owned since 1938. And I want to know who paced off those 676 steps from Ocean City to Boulevard Liquors. I wonder if it was Bruce Beaver or Tim O'Shea. I don't think so. <laughs> All right, there was a penalty against Delcy. Five-yard penalty. Oh, 
So now they end the third quarter again. <laughs> I have to do things right. Sure, True Value Hardware in Summers Point hopes that you'll continue to shop locally. They offer friendly service and expert advice. At Sure Hardware, they'll do anything to help. They're open weekdays and Saturdays until 6, Sundays until 4. Help is just around the corner at Shore True Value Hardware, 515 New Road, Summers Point. Phone 609-927-6464 or visit them online at shorehardware.com. Tides changed here a little bit in the second half. Both teams have scored in the third quarter. A halftime score, if you're just joining us, was 28 to nothing in favor of Delcy. And uh, the Raiders put up seven points in the third quarter. Delcy answered, going for it on fourth down from just inside midfield and uh, threw, I think, only their second or third pass of the game, not only to complete to a first down, but also to score a touchdown. And they jump back into that 28 point lead here as we start the fourth quarter. Ocean City still huddling on the sidelines. How much time did they have to do that? Well, the official just blew the referee just blew the whistle. Yeah. They're not going to get a penalty if they don't come out here. Yes, they are. They've had one delay a game. And they hustle out. First down and five for Ocean City to start the fourth quarter. Nothing there. Gunther couldn't find Jim, a hole. Jim Reardon makes a stop there for Delcy with some help. Pick up a couple. Final score, Mainland 47, Atlantic City 18. Stephen Ordilly ran for 200 and 67 yards. Mustangs have a good football team this year. Gunther. And he stopped short of the 40, uh, 45. About two, maybe three yards short. Yeah, you wonder if... Uh, if on the Delsey sideline defensively they had a little huddle and said, hey, look, you know, we, we, we didn't give anything up on the ground in the first half, and here we come out in the third quarter and you're giving up 50 yards on the ground. Let's third stop that. We'll find out. City. Raiders only gained a couple yards here on these two plays. Gunther again. He adjusts and might have adjusted enough to get a first down. We'll see where they spot the ball. Right now in the fourth quarter with six minutes left, Tom's River North trails Donovan Catholic 14 to seven. Tom's River North, the number one ranked team in South Jersey. Donovan Catholic not in that ranking because they're... They're gonna mark him just half a yard short and that was all Gunther, what he gained there. Well, they're going after it. Gunther got the first down. Still on his feet at the sidelines inside the 40-yard line. Driven out of bounds there by uh, Giuliano Canigliaro. Officials stopped the clock. Player shaking up, slow to get up. Sure, True Value Hardware in Summers Point hopes that you'll continue to shop locally. And they're at 515 New Road in Summers Point. Visit them online at surehardware.com. If you have printing needs, you need the printing company in Summers Point. They're top quality printers, friendly, skilled professionals. The printing company will work with you as part of their unwavering commitment to exceed your expectations. From concept to finished product, your business is their priority. They pride themselves in delivering the expert printing you deserve at an affordable price. From business cards to brochures to visual communications. That includes signs, banners, graphics, vehicle wraps, and much more. The Printing Company, open 9 to 5 at 457th Street in Summers Point. Phone Chugger and his staff 
at 609-374-5417. Let the printing company bring your ideas to life. Players still down. I don't know if you're getting cramps at this point. It's kind of cool out. Yeah, I think he uh, ankle or leg, left leg. Well, it looks like Saluda. Certainly needing some assistance to get to the sideline. Mm -hmm. First and 10, the ball's on the 39-yard line. And keeps it, gets away from the rush. And basically throws it away at the feet of Nick Layton. Yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't much chance that pass was going to be completed. And Hendricks is out there running for his life and being chased by... Uh, three defenders and three more defenders on Leighton. So he did well just to get rid of it. Bring them out. Pleasantville leads Glassboro in the second half, 14 to eight. And Gunther drives down to the 35 yard line. Yeah. Just finding some space to gain four or five yards and hope he can break one. Third and six. At least the Raiders are showing a little bit of uh, momentum here in the second oh, half. The I don't think the final outcome is in doubt Third as far as which team's going to win the game, the but, Raiders. you know, they're, they're certainly uh, presenting themselves a little bit better here in the second half than they did in the first. Yeah, absolutely. Gonna have a slot to the left, receiver to the right. Third and about six. Hendricks has time, fires, almost intercepted. And right in the hands of the defender. He'd like to have that one back. And so would Hendricks. Uh, Raiders have no choice here but to go for it. Fourth down on the 35-yard line at need six. Clock stops with the interception. Still a pretty uh, loud crowd. The one thing I noticed here, Tom, we'll mention it after this play. Fourth and six it is. Deep drop, screen pass. Caught for a first down. Still on his feet, tripped up at the 15-yard line. Gunther with a nice catch and a nice cut after he cat caught it. Hendricks just, I'm sorry, Tom, go ahead. Hendricks just kind of loops the ball over top of the defender's heads, and Gunther makes a one-handed catch and, and just gets down and, and it gets tripped up, just unable to get in the end zone. But what a catch. Ball's on the 13-yard line. First and 10. Grand Cocos Valley leads Timber Creek 18 to seven. Both of those teams came in three and up. And Middle Township has beaten Clayton to go four and up. Don't have the final score though. Maybe a yard. Well, when that big number 75 brings you down, you know it. Yeah, you celebrate it. Yeah, you, and you just hope that he doesn't land on top of it and stay there. <laughs> he celebrated. Some Could, good moves in that celebration. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, second and 10. Yep. No gain. Balls at the 13. Second and 10 for Ocean City. 720 left. Clock moving. And Hendricks doesn't get anywhere. Yeah. 
Jim Reardon. Jim Reardon. First no, guy exactly. making a stop. Looked like this was going to be a running clock game at halftime, but yep. Ocean City said no. And uh, they still trail by 28, same margin that, that it was at halftime, but each team has scored here in the second half. Yep. Like I said, they certainly presented themselves much better. Second and 10. Excuse me, third and 10. Third and nine. Bad second quarter for the Raiders, but they've been able to run the ball a little bit better this half. A lot better. And Nick's a throw for the end zone. John Moyer. Touchdown. Number one, John Moyer. John Moyer's third touchdown catch of the season. Put the ball right on the money, and Moyer makes the catch. That's what you expect your number one receiver to do. Just nice a little floater pass out there. Beat the one-on-one -on -one coverage. And a well-thrown ball right at the post. So Ryan Hendricks has had a good uh, second half. Scored a touchdown and now throws one. And Ryder Hay remains perfect. Six for six on the year. Ocean City cuts it to 35 to 14. Things are always happening at the Ocean City Free Public Library coming up October 5th. The Fall Author Luncheon at the Flanders Hotel featuring Pam Jenoff. In information's available at OceanCityLibrary.org. And there's a classic film again on Monday in the Chris Maloney Lecture Hall Dead Poets Society starring the great Robin Williams and featuring Ocean City High School graduate Rich Stites. You can also learn the best way to apply for college at the library or improve your cooking and computer skills. It's all free, plus books, magazines, internet access, and much more. The Ocean City Free Public Library, 18th and Simpson. Visit them online at OceanCityLibrary.org. If you're planning to build a home, make your first step a visit to Halliday Leonard. Halliday Leonard will consult you on your design, assist the development of your custom home. They build single homes that will fit most any budget, plus condominiums, townhouses, and commercial buildings. Get your ideas together and take them to Halliday Leonard, 700 Haven Avenue in Ocean City. Phone them at 609-398-5737. Halliday Leonard will help make your dream home a reality. I won't be surprised to see the Raiders try an onside kick here. Got okay. nothing to lose, and might as well practice it. Okay. And they do. The ground ball it takes a big hop, and it's covered by Delcy. Yeah, that's uh, Conigliaro over there. So they'll have good uh, field position. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's, a, you know, it's not something that's successful very often. But, uh, you know, I think it was worth a shot there. I mean, 35 to 14, we got six minutes to go here in the football game. And uh, executed very well, but, you know, the other team's got hands guys up front and they make the play. I mean, what's the difference if you're giving them the ball at the 45 yard line or you give it to them at the 25 yard line? That, you know, they can, they can make that 20 yards up in a couple of running plays. Ocean City one for two on the onside kick this year. Delsey calls a timeout. 6-18 remaining. Delsey's on top, 35-14. Pacini, 13th and West in Ocean City, features gourmet wood-fired pizza. But they're more than just pizza. Featuring pasta, chicken, and seafood entrees, plus fresh salads and sandwiches. Pacini is open year-round, seven days a week. Phone ahead for pickup and delivery, 609-525-0767. Pacini is open every day at 11.30 a.m. until 9 on weekdays, 10 on weekends. And Dining In is back at Pacini. They impressed Guy Fieri on the Food Network's diners, drive-ins, and dives, and they'll impress you, too. Stop and see what they're all about. 1260 West Avenue in Ocean City on the corner of 13th and West right next to Wawa. Check out their menu at Pacini, OCNJ.com. And uh, straight ahead for a couple of yards to midfield. That was Dan Russo. 
Berardis makes the first contact with a round the angles tackle. As I mentioned before, there good crowd came up here from Ocean City. I'm not sure that they're still all here, but a tremendous crowd here on the Delsey side. Now, the one thing I'm I'm disappointed for the Delsey fans and some of the kids is that that the cheerleaders, the dance team, whatever, that's a focus at a lot points during the game, they're in the dark because the lights don't shine on this side of the field. Oh, yeah. Nor the other side. And there's a flag and a whistle and all kinds of things. Somebody's moving. Maybe we'll see it here. Oh, yeah, definitely. The up back. Russo just moved way before the snap count. Missed it by one. Cost him five. Like I said, the the, uh, the one thing you ask for your kids when you're down 28 nothing at halftime is don't quit. And I, I think Kevin Smith's going to be real happy in the second half effort that, that his kids have come out here with. I agree. Got a couple of touchdowns. They lead the second half, 14-7. Correct. Forced a couple of punts. Back to throw. He floats it out there and gets his man at the 40. Moyer makes the tackle, but a nice throw under pressure by, by uh, Maxwell and a good catch by Anderson. Man, he just kind of just heaved it. He got such pressure out there. And Max uh, Mac did Maxwell. The pressure... <clears throat> Sorry, that was not uh, Anderson. That was uh, Giuliano Canigliaro. And the pressure came from uh, Anthony Gasparovic. Just had his hand in Maxwell's face. Just couldn't prevent the pass. Balls at the 32. Russo up the middle. Flag on the play. And that may be a hold. It is. Just saw the officials signal each other. Holding called against Chelsea. Yeah, I don't think Sam Casey's going to be as happy with his team here in the second half. Lower Cape May has beaten Cumberland 40 to nothing. Any surprises to you, Tom? Um... Maybe the margin of Mainland's win it certainly impresses upon their strength. And uh, no, Millville St. Augustine was a good game. It looks like Saint, uh, Millville, I don't have a final, but they were winning 21 to 7 in the fourth quarter. Yeah, there is a surprise, actually. Tom's River North is losing now 21 to 7, and Michael Ford has been injured. He's going to Stanford. Now, we say he's injured, it just means he's not playing, but might not be anything serious so after the penalty Maxwell, Maxwell keeps yeah, he's not even back to the original line of scrimmage yet it's going to be a couple yards shy of that yep second about 13 maybe 14 balls on the 36 yard line Anderson's in motion Back to throw. Nice catch over the middle. And a good throw, too. The ball's inside the 25-yard line. A first down. Jonathan Harris, 6-foot, 227-pounder, played 6-5 on that throw. Yeah, and you can't fault the coverage there. I mean, two Raiders right there. Shut in and Forster, and, and the ball just thrown where the receiver could only catch it, and a really nice catch. I guess, you know, you don't give Maxwell quite enough credit for throwing the ball because they run it so well. But he's thrown the ball very well. His completion percentage is excellent. That's the 17th first down for Delsey. Russo doesn't find any room. Kind of surprised they haven't taken any of these guys out. Yeah. But it could be reasons. They get more points for margin of victory? No. no. 
Yeah, I'm surprised too. And they, who do they have next week, Tom? Do you know? Kingsway right. just beat Vineland tonight, 28 to 13, 38 to 15. I remember you mentioned that before. Now. And straight ahead, nothing there. It's Russo again. A defensive front now, and, and the linebackers also are, you know, plugging the holes a little bit better than they were initially. Maybe these big guys are getting tired on offense. I imagine. Minute and a half left. Clock continuing to run. And yeah, neither team interested in stopping it. No, and both teams have something to build on here. Certainly a big win, nice win for uh, Delcy. Ocean City, as you said, outscored them in the second half when they both were playing their regular lineups. Maxwell puts a man in motion. And there's a flag. Illegal procedure. 60 yards in penalties against Delcy. Ocean City has 10. Well, they're not going to be happy about it here at the home field. But again, whether you like it or not, I think your kids have a tendency to lose a little bit of focus at this point in the game, even before this point in the game. We're under a minute to go here in a, you know, a 35 to 14 lead. You're not focused like you were in the first half where it was a one score game. Maxwell under center. He's going to throw, rolling left. Gets pressure, gets it away. Was he in bounds? Official says yes. Nice throw under pressure. Alex Grippo makes the catch. And one thing for sure, Zach Maxwell can handle pressure. Not that you're surprised, but uh, he certainly can. Um, what surprised me was that they would throw the ball there. I mean, this is a team that runs the ball 90% of the time, and we're inside a minute. Score's not in doubt. I'm just, I would have lost a lot of money betting that they weren't going to throw the ball there. For the Crusaders. Fourth and eight. Maxwell on a reverse. And Ocean City's got him. Head off to number 32, Alex Grippo. That was Grippo. And he'll be short of the first down. Ocean City is going to take over with 45 seconds left. Sounds like somebody's starting a motorcycle right up next to Bill. <laughs> Ball spotted at the 16-yard line. The RJH Insurance Group has specialized in home and flood insurance since 2006. At RJH, they're committed to excellence. As an independent agency, they have the ability to represent multiple insurance companies to get their customers the most competitive rates. Call Rich Hogue for a quote, 609-630-4569. Check out their many services at rjhinsurance.com. The RJH Insurance Group. Everybody getting settled here now. Hendricks under pressure. Gets away from both of them. Points out a block. He's still on his feet. Now almost to the 40-yard line. Well, you got to give him a lot of credit here in the second half. He, two guys had a shot at him. He got away from both of them. Cut inside. There's number four. And I think he actually tripped over one of his own men there as he was came to the ground. Ball's at the 38. It's less than 20 seconds to go. We'll see if Ocean City can get off. Well, they'll get one playoff. Slot handoff to Gunther. Gunther to the outside. He gets a first down and goes out of bounds. And off the number five to Gunther. Tenth first down. For Ocean City, the ninth here in the second half. And with, is that 3.8 seconds? It is. One play to go here on the 49-yard line. So it's been an interesting finish. Yeah. Nothing, nothing was more interesting, though, than that finish with Cedar Creek. Uh, it looked like they were completely out of it. 
Got the touchdown in the two-point conversion. Recovered the onside kick, but couldn't do enough with it before the game ended. So here they didn't recover the onside kick, but they made the defensive stop, and here they go with the final play of the game, unless there's a penalty, and it's going to be Gunther. And he's to the sidelines and out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. Actually, it was DiLorenzo, I guess, on the carry. Anthony DiLorenzo. And uh, Delcy wins it. They were expected to. They were the favorite. But Ocean City, at least in the second half, hung in there with them and loses it 35-14. And Ryan Hendricks, the sophomore quarterback, uh, ran for a touchdown and threw one to John Moyer to account for Ocean City's points. Ryder Hay remains perfect with the extra points. Mainland a big winner over Atlantic City. Millville continues to win. They're 4-0. Uh, uh, Middle Township, I mean. They beat Clayton. Kingsway over Vineland. Lower Cape May shut out Cumberland. Uh, Rancocas Valley was beating Timber Creek 18-7 last time we looked. And, and Millville was leading the St. Augustine 21-7. So lots of interesting games tonight. Not any gigantic surprises except, as we said before, that Tom's River North is losing in the final two, two minutes. And the New Jersey Player of the Year last year uh, was injured. Yeah, you see the players, uh, you know, completing their pleasantries after the game, going to their respective ends. Like you said, Tom, I mean, and we mentioned it, Kevin Smith's got some stuff to build on here in the second half, and, and the biggest part to me was that the, that the kids didn't, didn't give up. They fought back. They, they scored, got a couple scores. Played good defense, stopped that run that, that just kind of, in the first half, Delcy kind of had their way running the football, and, and uh, they made the adjustments at halftime and, and were able to stop it. We won't be here next week, or anywhere for that matter, and uh, D Delcy will. They'll be playing Kingsway here next week. Ocean City's off. We'll be back in two weeks at Cary Stadium when Winslow Township at full strength. They're already doing pretty well. They beat this Delsey team. And now they'll have those transfers all available for the Ocean City game two weeks from tonight. Special thanks to everybody here at Delsey Regional High School for their hospitality. The live video coverage of Ocean City High School football produced by Crossover Productions and Prime Events. The executive producers, Bill Shawcross and Matt Ulmer, tell your friends they can watch the action by going to OceanCitySports.com. Select the live streams, and they can watch all of this year's games and many years before. Final score, Delsey 35, Ocean City 14. We'll see you in two weeks.